Steve mm -hmm. Cram's about to be in action. David? Thank you, Des. I don't think Steve Cram can believe what's going on. He's got a groin injury. He wouldn't have an injection. He's going to try it out, but it's a gamble. And he's drawn against Morsley, the world number one, Rono, the Olympic champion, and Awita, the world record holder, which is some draw. As Morsley, only 21 from Algeria. What's Steve had to say to you about the draw, Brennan? Well, he was, he was very angry, and particularly when Abdi Bile was in it, but he's recently, in the last hour or so, has withdrawn from this race. But he saw, when he saw the lineup, he, he actually got the adrenaline flowing, which is a good thing. Saeed Awita there, this race would cost tens of thousands of pounds to put on anywhere else, but they all come here free because they all want to be the world champion. Steve's got two things on his mind. Obviously, he's got a uh, real concern about his groin and can he get round, but he chose sensibly, I think, not to have an injection. Three of the big ones together, Cram, world champion 83, world mile record holder, Rono the Olympic champion 7-0, the world record holder, Awita there, and this is Morsley, the world number one. Saad Awita, great friend of uh, Steve Cram's. Ah. Actually, it's a bit disconcerting, Brennan, isn't it? Because there's an echo in this stadium, and uh, once or twice I've seen athletes hesitate. Well, you rarely see a full start in the 1,500 metres. At least Steve Cram can see the, the funny side of it. And Awita, you don't often see Awita smiling until he's crossed the line. That's a rare sight in athletics. Side Awita smiling before the start of the race. But the pressure's on them now. They've got to get themselves reassembled. Forget about that little interlude. Get back to the start line. I think an official had a word with Steve, uh, Steve Graham. I'm not quite sure he thinks he was responsible. Anyway, with no lane blocks and no markers, we can't tell. What we do know, though, and it never happens, is that you can get disqualified in the 1500 metres for two false starts. So away they go. There are 13 in it now with Bealey out of it. And it's Benito of Spain who goes off in front. Uh, Oliveira of Brazil in the yellow vest and the checkered yellow and uh, blue of Sweden is Benson and they're not too ambitious no they're certainly not and if you look at the qualifying for the next round it's the first six in this and the six fastest losers so advantages to be gained by the people running in the later heats because there's certainly nobody in a hurry here and Peter Rona has gone from, from last to first in the space of about 50 metres so he's in the setting the pace, not doing anything about it, not too worried about it, and we've seen what a strong finish he has. They're moving up on the outside, number 463, from Equatorial Guinea, and Ningo. Full title is Ningo Alonga. No form at all, but he's enjoying it. Coming around with uh, 400 metres of almost completed, and it is very slow, 63.54. Rono, the Olympic champion, has been right out of form since he won that Olympic title. Showing a little bit better form this season, though. It's the Brazilian, Oliveira. Right behind him is Benito of Spain. Coming up on the outside is Awita. Uh, Morsley trying to avoid trouble from the man from Equatorial Guinea. He goes up on the outside, and Cram's looking for space on the outside, followed by Thomas Harrington, or Terence Harrington, rather, the American champion. And just behind him, Pat Scammell, uh, the Australian. The, the pole, by the way, on the uh, curb is Dudic. Well, there's no real advantage of going as slowly as this because then your mind starts working over time. You're looking around, you're seeing if you can find a position, which is exactly what Cram's doing there. And you've got Morselli ahead of him and Awita right ahead of him. And if you look at Awita and Morselli, I bet they try and prove a point to one another. They won't be happy to settle for qualification in the first six. They'll be trying to show who's the boss because there is a tremendous respect but more, more so than that, there's tremendous rivalry between the two of them. And look at the, look at the field, they're really concertina together. 2-7 for the first 800 metres, there's going to be an almighty rush over the next 700 metres. There's got to be, hasn't there? And I don't know whether that's to Steve Cram's advantage with that groin strain. I mean, he's really got to put the pedal down, and it is a bad groin strain. Two nights ago, he was thinking of pull it, pulling out, and he even thought about that this morning. So can he find anything now? The world champion of 83, the world mile record holder. He's moving up gradually, tentatively. He doesn't want to put too much pressure on it. The first six, remember, go through as of right. 
plus the six fastest losers from the three heats. And this is a slow one. So that theoretically, although it didn't happen in the women's race, because he wasted an advantage, the first qualifier should come from the later ones. Oliveira kicks on in front. Rono right alongside him. Svensson, the Swede, on the inside. Dudic of uh, Poland trying to get a run through. And Steve Cram with 300 to go, back in about 8th, uh, ninth place. But he's got space outside Pat Scammell. Running very, very wide, keeping clear of trouble. But how will the injuries stand up to this as they really start sprinting for home? 200 left. And this is the worst situation for Cram. He's gradually trying to work his way through. He almost hesitated there. Don't know whether he felt a, a niggle. Morsley comes home, followed by a Wheater, Benito. Oh, Cram got knocked all over the place by the Swedes. Svensson, and I'm afraid he will well have been knocked out of it. It's Morsley, a Wheater, Benito, Rono, and Cram still trying to get there, finishing seventh place behind Scammell and Svensson. And I think without any shadow of doubt, he would have qualified when he got knocked by the Swede, and he's in seventh place. Well, if you can lip read, you know how he feels. Well, he looked as though he was travelling fairly strongly around the top end, moving through, and they were, they were battling each other there before they had a real clash just a few steps later. Cram's given himself space, but then the Swede tries to come past the Spaniard on the outside, and I think you'll, you'll find that he runs straight into Cram. Well, that was, if there is any such thing as obstruction, that certainly was obstruction. Cram was all able to stand on his feet and then making a long run again. Morselli looking in control, Awita looking in control, Benito having made the finish, made the rush, and then Rono, and then Pat Scammell, and Cram giving him, putting himself back into the frame, but just failing out. Well, I think, this, uh, I think the Swede may be disqualified for that. I would have thought there may be a possibility, because uh, he was trying to find space where there wasn't space. We've got isolated close-up here of that incident. Mostly uh, safe. A Wheater in second place, Benito's third, Rono four. Now, they'll have a bump there. They're very close together, and Svensson all the time is looking for room. Now, he comes across. Cram trying to nurse himself. Oh, he got a push, actually, from the inside from Oliveira. Maybe if we could see that again. And Cram with that groin injury, that's the worst thing that could happen. And he still fought back. It may well be, though, it wasn't Svensson's fault. We may have another look at that in a moment. Morsley, Awita, Benito, Rono, Scammell, and Svensson, the qualifiers. And Cram only, well, inches away. Another stride, he'd have caught the sweep. And I, well, we said Kirsty Wade wouldn't qualify with that time in the first uh, heat, but she has. So uh, Cram could qualify as a fast loser, but I doubt it. I think he got knocked by uh, Oliveira Svensson, the Brazilian. So it may well be that... Uh, if there is an objection, Svensson may uh, prove not to have been the cause of it, but he certainly hit Cram hard. Of course, it won't help Cram's case if uh, Oliver uh, is disqualified because he didn't finish in the qualifying position. Svensson did. Now, the aggravation starts to get there. Now, there, there. And it looks to me, well, Oliver and... Uh, Svensson, we're looking for space. There's been a lot of niggling going on between them. It could be judged that Svensson was responsible for both incidents, but it's very difficult to tell. Well, Steve Cram really fought his way back in there. <laughs> it's very difficult in these situations, though, when you've got an injury like that, to produce a sprint finish and yet try and nurse yourself as well. But, of course, in the end, all the nursing went to nothing. Actually, there's uh, <laughs> one or two in the uh, commentary boxes around us uh, seem to feel that Pat Scammell, the inevitable Pat Scammell, who knocked John Walker over in the uh, Commonwealth Games in his final appearance in New Zealand, that Scammell was responsible at some stage as well. Now, Pat Scammell is behind that lot, uh, so I don't know whether someone's mistaken the yellow vest of the Brazilian. Now, Scammell comes up on the inside. He's just at the edge of the shot. 
is reputedly an awkward runner. He's looking for space where there isn't space. Yes, he's trying to ease his way through. The result is Oliveira goes on to Svensson. And it's the domino effect. And Scammell, by the way, did qualify, so there's an interesting situation building up here. Still on the field of 13, you've got to take uh, some of the rough stuff, whether it will be a judge to be unfair. I'm not sure, but uh, Steve Cram, I'm told now, Brendan Foster's gone downstairs to see him, is looking for the team management to file a complaint. 